We've come out today and I'm going to talk you through some method feeder tactics for early spring or autumn time where you're not going to be casting into the same hole every single chuck. Fingers crossed we get a few bites. So at this time of year, I don't really expect the fishing to be prolific, but I expect a few bites. And the way that I go about this, or I'm planning to go about this today, is to really explore the whole area that I have in front of me. So on the far bank, I'll pick two or three markers, and I'll tend to start in the middle of those three markers, and then work either left or right. I'll tend to leave the feeder out for five minutes. If I haven't had a bite, I'll bring it back in, and I'll chuck it maybe two meters to the left or two meters to the right. And again, leave it for five minutes to see whether I get a bite. Generally speaking, depending on the venue and what I've got in front of me, I'll look to start halfway of where I'd like to finish up. And the whole sort of theory behind what I'm planning to do is the fish aren't coming to my feeder aggressively at this time of year when it's, when it's only just starting to warm up. So you're kind of setting little traps, but you're also looking for where the fish are and where they might potentially be sitting. But also the fish, you might find a little pod of them and catch two or three fish, but then they could move back a metre, two metres. They could move to the left or the right. And if I carry on just dropping my feeder down that same hole, the chances are that it might take an hour or two before they come back. So it's really about being proactive and chasing the fish rather than waiting for the fish to come to you. So we're on our second cast, probably been in two minutes in the second sort of area that I felt, you know, slightly to the left of my first cast. And within two minutes, we've got one. I don't think it's a massive fish, maybe a small F1, but all the same, very welcome on a cold day. So today we've got a 3000 reel, perfect for pretty much all of all of the commercial fishing that I do. You know, casting feeders up to 30 grams, it's absolutely perfect. And that's combined with a Horizon Pro 11 foot feeder. The reason for picking this rod, maybe slightly longer than I'd normally use for a venue this size, but as you can see, we've got a bit of wind today. And although we are quite sheltered on this peg, the wind can switch directions and if it starts coming from left to right, then um, I know that I've got enough power within this rod to, to comfortably cast to the far bank if required. No point in rushing them, it's a lovely F1. Beautiful. Nice start. Three pound, four pound F1. Well, he was well behaved. So this is the third fish now. I had two from the first position, which was sort of two meters to the left of my original cast. I had another cast there for five, five minutes and didn't have a sign. So I cast again another two meters to the left of that. 
It's been out there actually a little bit longer than I'd normally leave it, probably just over five minutes. I was just about to wind in, the tip's gone round. Looks like we've got another F1. But again, it just goes to show the importance of, you know, not just sitting on the same same spot. You know, I've already, already cast the same distance because I'm clipped up, but I've cast in three different positions now along the far bank. And I've had fish from, from two of those positions. Oh, massive F1. Let's see if they'll be here. A lovely looking one anyway. Beautiful. So I'm using an open alloy feeder today. A fantastic feeder because it's really easy to load and you can use it with either ground bait or pellets very, very easily. You know that your bait's gonna get pulled down to the bottom because of the way that it's compacted into the, into the internal frame of the feeder. These feeders are fantastic because they've got a cutout along the back. So if you are fishing them inline, you can change the size of your feeder. They come supplied with an inline stem but you can buy the elasticated stems separately. So if the venue allows, you can switch them over so that you can fish them as an elasticated feeder. Also allows you to have multiple feeders set up. So as soon as you've caught a fish, the next one's ready, clip it on and cast it out. So we have four sizes of open alloy feeder and each one comes in two different weights. So I'll start with the smallest one. This type of feeder I generally use when it's cold up, but also in venues where there's uh, higher fish stocks or maybe potentially smaller size of fish where you're expecting to get a lot more bites. Generally speaking, when you're catching a lot more fish, you're casting a lot more regular. So it's much better if you can introduce smaller amounts of bait rather than using a big feeder. And it might work really well for the first hour and then you'll find you overfed your swim. The second size is the inter size. For me, this is my go-to feeder for pretty much all sort of early spring right the way through to early summer and then also in the autumn and i find this is perfect for if you're fishing for either f1s or carp chuck into an island um, where the stock levels of a lake you know maybe maybe it's sort of like high to medium and you're expecting to get bites within sort of five to ten minute intervals and the third size is medium this size i tend to use if i'm setting a trap on a bigger sort of water i might be fishing for bigger fish um, and I'm going to be sitting and waiting for bites a little bit longer or again in the summer if I'm chucking to an island um, and we need to introduce a little bit more bait then finally you've got the large perfect for fishing big open venues where you put in a bit of bait around a feedy you're sitting there and you're waiting for you know for a, for a bite maybe for anywhere up to 15 minutes or alternatively if you're needing to fish somewhere in the summer where you catch maybe down the edge or close and you're needing to introduce a lot of bait because the fish are obviously feeding, they're hungry. So they're the four different sizes that we do in the range. Today, I'm using the inter size. Again, as I said, this is pretty much my go-to feeder for, for probably 80% of the, of the feeder work that I do throughout you know, early spring and, and autumn. That's the second fish now in quick succession that I've had by changing, putting ground bait around my feeder rather than putting pellets. So I'll show you quickly here. I've got a feeder set up with pellets molded around it. You can see just some softened down micro pellets. The key thing when you're doing these is just to leave the water on for maximum of a minute. You can always add a little bit of water if you feel it too dry, but once your pellets go too wet, they just won't work around your feeder. They won't stick around the feeder and hold. When the feeder hits the water, they'll come off and you'll end up fishing a feeder on the bottom with no bait around it. And in this tub here, I've got some basically ground um, expander. When you wet it, it goes really fluffy. Um, and basically, from, a, from my point of view, the way I'm thinking is, 
if I'm fishing pellets, this is basically the same product, but just ground up into a, into a ground bait. It's a bit of a forgotten method, really, using ground bait around, around the feeder these days. Everyone seems to go to pellets. I always mix them both up. I'll generally start on micro pellets just because that's what I've got confidence in. And I've had three fish today within the first sort of 40 minutes fishing micros around the feeder. It went quiet. I'd had two or three casts. I'd unclipped and gone another three metres past where I was originally. I still hadn't had a bite. I'd switched between a few different hook baits. So I just thought, right, I'll try. I'll try ground bait, see if it, you know, provokes a reaction. And, and generally speaking with ground bait, you'll find that you do get a very quick, a quick bite. Um, and that was exactly the case. Within two minutes of, of it going in, I had, a, I had a fish. And then the second cast there, maybe less than that, maybe a minute and a half, um, another fish. I'll quickly talk you through some of the hook baits that I'm using as well. I have some white six mil pellets, some standard six mil pellets, um, tend to try to get some higher oil ones so they don't break down as quickly, um, especially in, in winter time when you know you might be sat waiting for a bite for 10 minutes. And another bait that I always like to have, it's not something I use a great deal, but it's just a few grains of corn. Again, for some sometimes this can really just, you know, the, for whatever reason, they'll, they'll want to feed on corn. I don't know whether it's because it's very visual, the texture, because of the weight. I just find sometimes, particularly on this venue at Manor Farm, you'll find there's days when you just can't catch on hard pellets and, and corn really comes into its own. So as I say, the key thing is just having not too much bait, but just having a selection that you're confident in that if you've sat for 10, 15 minutes, half an hour, and you haven't, you know, you've made multiple casts and you haven't had a bite, just try something different. You know, it only takes two or three casts, 10 minutes. And, and if it hasn't worked, you can always revert back to the original plan. Just one change has made a huge difference. This is the third fish now, three casts, all under two minutes. Switching to ground bait has made a massive difference. So these are the F1s that you want. These big old warriors. As you might notice there, I'm fishing a slightly shorter hook length. I'll talk about that in a second. I'll just pop this one in the net. So, as I mentioned, you might notice that this is a slightly shorter hook length. So what I find at this time of year, especially when you're fishing for F1s, a three inch hook length is the perfect length with either an inter or a medium sized open alloy feeder. So I'm using a six inch hook length, but I'm cutting it down to three inches. So these are the pre-tied hook lengths that I'm using today. A six inch MXC3 with a small band and they're tied to 016 diameter line. So I'll remove one from the pack and I'll show you what I do. So as you can see, they come six inches long. Fold the hook length exactly in half. Then you know it's bang on three inches. I use a loop tire. You can tie it by hand if you want. Tie your loop. Just wet that, pull it tight. And then trim off the excess line. Once you've done that, there you have a three inch hook length with a band that's perfect for this type of fishing that we've been doing today. So it's really quick to do this as well. You can quickly transform a six inch hook length to three inches on the bank whilst you're fishing. Typical for British springtime, starting to rain now. The closer that we've got to that far bank, the quicker the bites have come. And that has definitely been the key today. And particularly in the last hour, 
We're probably casting now 10 metres off the far bank. That seems to be where the fish have backed off to and we're getting one a chuck now. So this is going to be the final fish of the day. We had a fantastic day. The tactics have worked perfectly. We've had to move around, cast in multiple different places throughout the day, but we've got a really nice bag of fish. And as it warms up, I'm sure we'll be catching a lot more like this. What a beautiful F1 to end on. This is an absolute dinosaur. Perfect. So a fantastic net of F1s, one big lump of a carp. It just goes to show that the tactics we've used today really pay off at this time of year. So get out there and give them a go.